Hello my fellow researchers, my name is Jason and in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the partial correlation coefficient. And in this particular example I have three variables, variable A, variable B, and variable Z. And my goal is to see if the relationship between A and B is affected by Z. In other words, you can do a bivariate correlation coefficient between A and B, and you'll get a value. And that's, that's what this is going to be right here. But you want to find out if variable Z is removed, does the relationship between A and B change? And that's what we're going to find out here. Okay, And this is what's called a partial correlation. Now the first thing you want to do before you actually do any calculations is a scatter plot of your data. So I've done a scatter plot between variables A and B, and I've cheated because I've done it, done it in SPSS, um, but that's okay because here we can very accurately see what's going on. Now here's a relationship, or here's a scatter plot between A and B, and by looking at it you might think there is a positive linear relationship, and if I were to actually uh, plot a line of best fit, uh, well, you'll see that there is a positive linear relationship between variables A and B, right? But what's going on here? Like, does this really look like a positive linear relationship, or is there something going on here that we just quite, we just don't quite see at this point? It looks like there's three groups of data, okay? And in fact, there are three groups of data. You can see here variable Z is, is basically kind of grouping these four points together and these four points together and these four points together. And so without knowing about the existence of variable Z, just having A and B, you'll get a positive linear correlation. But as a researcher, as a researcher, you might suspect there is a third variable causing causing the relationship or affecting the relationship and your goal is to then uh, measure that variable that third variable and then remove it from the correlation to see what happens to see what we get now that's my introduction and here we are going to start doing the calculations and I'm not going to talk so much about the theory So I'm going to start with the sum of A, and I've already done these calculations, so I'm, this is not going to take too long, but I want you to know the steps involved. So first, we're going to add up all of our A values, and when you do that, we're going to get 90. And we're going to add up all of our B values, we're also going to get 90, and then we're going to add up all of our Z values, and we're going to get 24. Next step is to calculate the sum of A squared, so you're going to square each value, and then add them up. So 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 36 and so on is going to give us a total of 890. Doing that for all the B values, for sum of B squared, we're also going to get 890. And then sum of Z squared, you're going to square each of these values and add them all up just like we did previously and you're going to get a total of 56. Now the sum of squares A, here you can see we have our generic formula, okay, and if um, uh, it's probably a good idea to write these formulas down on a piece of paper so you always have them handy. We're just going to substitute A in, in the place of X in this case, and we're going to end up with a value of 215. Doing the same for B, we're going to end up with a value of also 215, and the sum of squares for Z, we're going to end up with 8. Now I suggest that you pause the video and do these calculations on your own just to make sure that you're getting the same answers as me. Here we have the sum of A times B. So you're going to multiply the A value by its corresponding B value and then you're going to add them up for each one. So 4 times 1 plus, 3 times 2 plus, 2 times 3 plus, 1 times 4 plus, so on and so forth. For that we're going to end up with 860 doing the same between variables B and Z we will get 220 and then doing the same between variables A and Z we'll get also 220 
Now the sum of products. We're going to calculate the sum of products again between each of these uh, variable relationships. And for the sum of products A and B, we're going to get 185. For sum of products B and Z, we're going to get 40. And for sum of products A and Z, we're also going to get 40. Now when you're doing these calculations, just keep in mind you know, exactly which variables uh, you're, you're including in the calculation. So for example, here we have A and Z. Make sure that when you're looking at the formula here, and this is the generic formula, uh, you replace uh, here with A and this, this section with A and Z. Here it's the sum of A and Z. Here it's the sum of A times the sum of Z, so, so on and so forth. So you don't want to get your variables mixed up. Now, finally, we get to calculate the bivariate correlation coefficients for each of the possible combinations. And our, our generic formula is right here. And again, just make sure that you're putting in the correct uh, values. For, to solve for this, we're going to end up with something that rounds to 0 0.86. And for this uh, relationship here between B and Z, we get 0 0.96. And between A and Z, we also get 0 0.96. Now these values are rounded. okay? And if you want to actually get the correct partial correlation coefficient, you're, you're going to have to use the full value. Okay, it's going to go on and on and on, probably about five or six uh, decimal places. Um, you have to use those values, otherwise you're not going to get the correct um, partial correlation coefficient. So now we, we can solve for the partial correlation coefficient, and when you do, you're going to end up, well, you're going you're gonna to get to a step that looks something like this, negative 0.0. .0 six nine seven six and it's going to go on as well dot 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 I should put dot 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 here okay and it's going to be divided by in the denominator we're also going to have the same value which is going to equal negative one okay so what do we notice here we, we, we finish off Okay, we finish off with a partial correlation coefficient of negative one, but, bef but before that, or before we conducted the partial correlation coefficient, we, we had a, a value of, of 0 0.86, okay? Positive 0 0.86, and, and now we have negative one. So what's the difference between these two numbers here? Well, let's look at our scatter plot, okay? This line right here, which is, which is not the partial correlation coefficient um, line, you could say, is it, it, it's representing a, a positive linear relationship, which, which matches up with our 0 0.86 value. But when we remove z, okay, and if we, if we sort of uh, look at these data values, these data points, separately or in groups, then, then what we actually see is, is a negative, perfect negative linear correlation. And that's visually, you can see that visually here, right? So these are, each of these is, a, is its own perfect negative linear correlation. And you can also see that in the data. Because if you just look at this part right here, just, no, just look at this part right here, okay? If you plot this, 4 to 1, 3 to 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 4, that's a perfect negative linear correlation. Same here. 11 to 14, 12 to 13, 14 to 11, and 13 to 12. That's also a perfect negative linear correlation. So when you look at all this data as a whole, what you get is a positive linear correlation. But when you look at it individually, each of these groups, what you get is a perfect negative linear correlation. And that's because we controlled for Z. All this is because of Z. Okay, now uh, there's many ways of, of explaining partial correlation and, and this is, I'm, I've just touched the surface. Um, if, you, if you want more explanation, please uh, look at my other video on the partial correlation where I'm going to be using SPSS a little bit more to help explain uh, what's going on. So, so thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video. Cheers!